Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring a ship that I was just recently requested to show since uh, some a lot of people missed me leveling past this ship on my Russian account. So uh, there was some request that if I could make a commentary because not surprisingly the tier 7 uh, Russian cruiser The Shores is a ship that uh, a lot of people actually struggle with. Now there's multiple reasons for this. First of all, uh, the Budionni is kind of overpowered for tier 6. It's well, uh, it's very very strong for, for tier 6, whereas the shores at tier 7 isn't really nearly as strong. Um, the biggest difference really is that you actually lose a significant armor going from the Budioni to the shores, while the Budioni has a nice 150mm armor uh, belt protecting the citadel. The shores on the other hand only has 75mm of armor protecting the citadel. Now, this is pretty significant, because not, not only are we losing 40mm uh, of armor, just move, moving up a tier, but uh, the citadel also gets larger, the ship in general gets larger, and uh, this is, well, if, if to put it into perspective, uh, the Pensacola, which is known for being extremely squishy, has 76mm armor on parts of its citadel and 105mm armor on other parts. This one, only 75 all over the armor. The rest of the ship, complete paper. Uh, it's got 16mm armor pretty much all over the bow, uh, the deck, uh, the upper broadsides are like 20mm, but it's still extremely weak. What this of course means, uh, armor like 16mm gets overmatched by I think 230mm guns. So what this means is any hits you take from any battleship, it doesn't matter if you angle, it doesn't matter how well you angle, if they hit anywhere on your ship, they will lead to full penetrations. And this is an important lesson to learn, because in the Budioni you could kind of angle against same tier battleships, and uh, you could bounce a lot of the shells thanks to the armors. Um, the shores gets overmatched everywhere. It, you might as well pretend that the ship doesn't have any armor, because it just it, you cannot bounce shells um, with any sort of confidence with this ship. And that's a very important lesson to learn. And what this ultimately means is, of course, uh, Big Citadel, extremely squishy and, in general, fairly large size. What this means is, of course, that you have to, in general, avoid taking damage at all. You don't want to take any sort of damage anywhere, because even DDs can Citadel you. That's no joke. I, I tend to, when I play Russian DDs and I see a Shores, I switch to AP and I just aim for the Citadel. And you can easily Citadel them at pretty extreme ranges, because this 75mm uh, armor is kind of a joke. It doesn't stop anything. So it, it is a learning experience going from the Budioni, that is a fa fairly tanky for a cruiser, going to the shores. Like, if you put it in perspective, something like the Mayoko has 32mm uh, deck armor, which means uh, in the Mayoko, if you angle against battleships and you take the shells on top of the ship instead of like the bow or the stern or whatever, or the broadside, uh, then you bounce them without any issues. So that's why the Mayoko is pretty tanky. The shores, any hit, always a penetration. Important to know. So, uh, well, that was an angled shorts and I overpanned him, like, uh, yeah. Of course, this means, th this complete lack of armor, of course, also means that HE in general tends to deal full damage pretty much everywhere it hits, except the turrets. Uh, and, well, he gave me, he's, I switched to AP, of course, since he's giving me a broadside. I aimed a bit too high, six overpans. But, in general, uh, you're very unlikely to bounce, ever bounce AP shot at the shores uh, unless, they're ang unless they're angled. So, the ship is squishy, but it does have its upsides. It does is very, very squishy, it doesn't have the best health pool, 32k isn't exactly impressive, uh, but it has a lot of guns. It has a lot of guns. 12 guns, uh, I think they were 152mm. What this of course means is uh, 8 second reload on these guns, 25 second turret traverse. So these guns are great, they handle great, they have great range, and uh, they got pretty damn flat arcs as well. And when you put IFHE on these guns, suddenly the shores becomes a DPM monster. The sheer amount of damage you can pour out with the help of IFHE is pretty damn impressive. So every single game kind of becomes this um, this extreme cruiser simulator where you try to survive to do damage. If you get into a good position behind an island or you get the free fire, you can do crazy amounts of damage. But if you mess up even once, you can get punished heavily. You saw that? I was pretty angled, but not enough. And get off space guns straight into my citadel. I'm down to half HP. 
And this was just a Graf Spe. This isn't like a particularly strong, this is just a tier 6 cruiser with slightly bigger guns. And that's how quickly uh, you can start melting and uh, how careful you have to be. Defensive, popping defensive AA of course to help my Fuso. Um, it's a tier, I think tier 6 carrier, so the AA, the AA isn't really that good. But if they fly right on top of you with defensive AA on, of course you're gonna have a fairly big impact. And note how careful I am keeping angled against this Graf Spear, because as I said, um, this ship eats a lot of punishment. In general though, you want to, you never want to be in a situation where you're unaware of where the enemy battle, enemy ships are. Not just battleships, but pretty much any ships, because any even cruisers that switch to AP can punish you. So uh, your goal is to always glance at the minimap. In this ship you kind of want to glance at the minimap between pretty much every single volley and just give a, get an idea of um, where the enemy ships are. Also priority target is your best friend. As soon as the number starts climbing you probably want to disengage entirely uh, and I mean co completely disengage, turn around and flee because as I said, unlike other cruisers who can angle and take a few hits, you can't do it in this ship. You have to play super super safe at all times. There, there, is a, there is no redeeming feature where you can kind of get away with, oh, well, I turned in and angled against those shells. It doesn't happen. If a battleship, a battleship can easily devastate you just by shooting at your nose uh, because the citadel is large enough and it can overmatch any part of your ship. So you got to be careful with that. Of course, the fairly sluggish handling on the ship also means that torpedoes can be a real threat to you. Um, I did manage to dodge those, but it's something to keep in mind as well. And especially since you don't want to be specking into vigilance, because uh, you want to have uh, you want to have that fire increased fire chance to further. Uh, strengthen these guns so you don't really have any sort of early warning to, uh, early warning system for torps also of course you want defensive AA because if you don't have it um, a carrier can kind of eat you alive because of the sluggish turning circle so these are the torpedoes in general can be a big threat to you but that's why you should rarely if ever be the front line the only reason I'm the front line here is because we already know there's nothing else here but if we're pushing into uh, unfamiliar territory or um, pushing into caps and things like that you should never be the first guy in as a shorts never ever let DD scout for you let other tanker cruisers or battleships be the ones to push um, if your team isn't pushing then you kind of struggle because you can't really push in the shores it doesn't it doesn't do that well oh wow I was hoping to farm some damage off that Bruyo but the Fuso straight up deleted him of course spotter plane I use it mostly for the additional range, especially if you're up-tiered, but if you catch these slow, slow battleships, uh, thanks to the rate of fire and the DPM, you might be able to deal some damage. You do note that it takes 13 seconds for my shells to reach you. Uh, the shells are very light because of the small caliber, so the further away you shoot, the more you have to lead. As you notice just how much I'm having to lead here to actually land the shells. Even when it looks like they're going to hit, it takes a time, some time, additional times for the shells to actually fall from the sky. So the lead you have to take is pretty extreme. However, when we are hitting, you see of course the power of these guns and IFA. HE, the DPM plus the fire chance is very, very impressive. Oh, let's see if I can finish off the Galissonier. This game is fairly close. We have a one ship lead. Well, if I kill this guy, we should have a two ship lead, which would, should make this a lot more safe. But then again, um, my teammates have really horrible positioning. If you look at the minimap, you can see my Fuso and New York. They are very, very far away. Uh, from any sort of central positioning and in fact the only the front line we have right now is the Fiji and the Graf Spe and well I'm the flanking ship <laughs> that's that's pretty much it I'm pushing for the cap of course trying to secure the cap since we really need it to be able to win this and I'm using the spotter plane to its maximum efficiency hoping to get a fire on this New Mexico because he did repair my fire earlier but that's of course easier said than done at these ranges, even hitting a dodging battleship can be surprisingly difficult because of the increased shell travel time. And spotter plane runs out and they are out of range. The range is very nice on the ship, but uh, especially when you're up tiered and you're facing some really scary accurate battleships, uh, it feels like it's not quite enough. And that's mostly because the ship is just so, so squishy. Uh, for people that play the Pensacola, 
they should be fairly comfortable in uh, the shores. It doesn't have the same type of concealment that the new buffed Pensacola has, um, but you have to be constantly aware and play very, very safe at all times because, well, all it takes is one battleship salvo. One battleship salvo, you don't even have to be giving, giving perfect broadside. Um, you just, he just has to get a good shot off. And that's all it takes and you can get devastated the low health pool combined with the large citadel combined with the thin armor is just you are you tend to be, be considered an xp pinata which of course can often lead to people underestimating you because unlike the pensacola that has fairly strong ap the shores has a lot of goddamn dpm and the sheer amount of damage you can just pour out if you get ignored is not something you should underestimate at all so if you see a shores who's getting free firing um i tend to take them as a priority target because a they can be killed very easily b if left alone the amount of damage they can pour out can be very considerable at this point it should be unlikely that we lose i'm gonna see if i could maybe hunt down these guys nope he gets killed off oh and a feature pops up this is one of those rare cases, I think, yeah, one HG, but he's giving broadside, so I am switching to AP here. Six shatters, I hit his belt, which is armored enough to shatter my HG, but AP should not have the same type of issues. Overpens, I think he needs to give a bit more broadside for me to be able to sit that I'm aiming right at the waterline, and finally getting some citadels in. I did drop my torps, just in case he tries to YOLO rush me, but ultimately it wasn't needed. That could have been maybe done a bit smoother and a bit quicker because the Fiji did kind of play into my hands there. I don't know if he underestimated me or he was just tunnel vision in the other guy he was shooting. Overall he was caught in a really bad position. Stationary or reversing battleships are of course your favorite because um, what you lack in shell velocity at long ranges um, if you get to shoot at someone sitting still and you literally just get to pour out that DPM on them, um, then you can really farm a ton of damage. I mean, we're talking quarters of levels of damage potential on this ship, so don't underestimate that. People look at Kutuzov and they go, oh my god, that's a, such, such a scary uh, HE spammer. Uh, Whereas you should be looking at the shores the very same way. It of course just lacks the armor, health, smoke and all these things that makes it so scary. But the shores is not someone to be underestimated at all. And But in general, flanking, safe, um, never, being, never be in the central part of the battle. Never be in a situation where you, where you can get be shot from, from unexpected angles. Because you don't have time to react. If you get shot at from an angle you didn't expect, even if you react instantly and start turning in, because of the general sluggishness of the ship, uh, it's unlikely you will actually dodge any of the shells. So just never put yourself into the position where it can even happen. The shores emphasizes positioning and map awareness more than anything. Um, angling is less important, I mean, reducing citadels, of course, it's always important on all cruisers, but this one is all about positioning and awareness. That's, that's what's really being hammered in. Where the Pensacola hammers in angling, uh, this one hammers in positioning and general map awareness. I do manage to kill off the last ship, and the game does end with a pretty respectable 151k damage. Um, this was my daily win bonus, so I of course got a nice a chunk of XP from the 6 kills. 11 planes shot down, even with carriers flying right on top of me. That kind of shows that the AA really isn't that good. Um, but overall, a very comfortable game with pretty much all the damage rewards. 2.9k base XP, which is of course always nice. Um, the damage can kind of vary. You can you can get higher damage games if you end up against higher tier battleships. For example, uh, Amagis, Nagatos, Bismarcks, all of these that uh, if you get a chance to just HE spam them, you can of course do massive IFHG plus fire damage on them and you can get these really absurd numbers. But in general, um, in general, uh, 150k isn't that isn't bad of a score at all. I consider it a high score for this cruiser because of um, how hit and miss this ship can be. You can have really, really monster games, and you, you can have games where you kind of eat an unlucky citadel right at the start of the game. Across the map, even if you angle your turn, one shell happens to fall on, on, on the middle of your ship. Even when angled, it's a citadel, half your health pool is gone. Like, you, you, you'll have those experiences in the ship, and you kind of just have to power through them and go, well, fuck. Nothing I can do, let's move on. And uh, detail report wise, 
Not surprising, uh, HE is the primary source of the damage. Some additional fire damage and just a bit of AP, mostly I think the Fiji and I did try to shoot the enemy shores a bit with AP. Uh, damage, a uh, potential damage not high at all, which it really shouldn't be. Um, well, it, what I mean is it shouldn't be high is that you can't of course control the enemy shooting you, but you should never put yourself into situations where you are a target that the enemy prefers to go for. Always try to leave them with another more preferable target, which of course isn't easy because of how, how tempting of a target the Shores is. It's earned the same reputation that the Pensacola has. You look at it, you get a Citadel. So of course this takes, uh, this, this emphasizes as I said, your positioning extremely heavily. And uh, credits and XP, of course, because this was my daily win bonus, I got so much XP. Anyway, let's move on to, to my recommended build for this ship. As I've already moved past the shores to the chat I have, um, I might as well... I'll, I'm just going to show it from the tech tree what my upgrade path is. First of all, range. Absolutely range. Upgrading, well, upgrading your hull is good in the sense that it gives you maneuverability and HP. Um, what keeps you alive fundamentally is range and being able to stay away from everyone shooting at you So I personally went range first then the hull upgrade You need both of course because the shores kind of needs all the help it can get because as I said it is a very very squishy ship now upgrade wise uh, I recommend you can't slot the concealment of course this is chop five only but upgrade wise I do recommend slotting uh, rudder shift and AA range and the AA module I think is only available for tier 8 ships so um, before that just slot damage control systems or possibly steering gears which one you choose is up to you and, but other than that it's very basic cruiser main armaments, AA range and rudder shift very basic cruiser build in that sense captain perks wise priority 1 for the russian line is priority target well for all cruisers pretty much followed by adrenaline rush you don't need a turret traverse because your turret traverse is already so good uh, demo expert as your first, first tier 3 perk since you do want that increased fire chance now you do have some options here if you want to go for IFHE or concealment expert first if you have issues with your survivability go for concealment expert first if you want more raw damage go for IFHE first but note that it's harder to play if you go for IFHE first because while you do get the raw damage you get outspotted much much easier which makes and in a shores being outspotted means everyone is already targeting at you so keep that in mind I went for IFHE first but I would say a much safer choice would be to go for concealment expert first Ultimately though, you want both of these perks when you hit uh, 14 points. The 15th point I just put into preventive maintenance, but ultimately I'd like to be able to save for uh, superintendent as the next perk since it gives additional radar at tier 8 and of course at tier 9 it also gives additional uh, healing, which is very, very important. And uh, let's see, what else? Flags? Well, uh, pretty base flags are pretty basic on all of these. Um, I prefer running the fire chance flags because when you got these light guns that uh, with high rate of fire uh, increasing the fire chance is of course very very beneficial other things speed helps your survival um, I use November Foxtrot simply because I have so many of them but the AA range might be useful in general I'm just spamming XP flags because this is my Russian account and I am leveling the cruiser line on the Russian account ultimately though uh, there's not really too much to talk about the shores. It is a very, very squishy ship, but if you manage to survive in it, the damage potential the ship has, thanks to all the firepower it has, is very, very respectable. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.